What's the charismatic? Okay. Uh, let's put it this way. A charismatic movement, the charismatic movement to the outside people is the movement that declares the speaking of tongues. Okay? That is separate from the Pentecostal denominations and churches. Most people do not realize that the Pentecostal churches are not part of the charismatic movement. In fact, many of them oppose it. All right? The charismatic movement in reality was one of three steps declared back in 1964 to do two things. While the main function was to destroy the fundamental church of any type. All right? The Masons was one, and the charismatic church was another. Okay? And then the political maneuvers was the third. Now, the charis most people, you know, they, post, they get caught up in the charismatic movement. They don't stand back and watch it. It has two distinct signs where it goes. If it isn't a fundamental church, it splits it every time. I have never seen any fundamental evangelical church stay the same after it came there. And the other thing it does is it unites all the liberal churches. It has brought the Catholics, the Lutherans, and the Mormons, even the Mormons, the Methodists, the Episcopalians, Presbyterians, everybody together. Now, I'm going to make some quotations. See, I'm not a charismatic, I admit it, but I'm not a Baptist either, so don't say I'm saying it because I'm a Baptist. I'm against it. I'm against it for one reason. I was on the Council of 13 and had to pay too many millions of dollars out to that organization to accept that it be of God and its leaders, since I know most of its leaders by first name basis. They used the charismatic movement to establish Jesus Rock. I had to deliver a $4 million check that was the second $4 million check that Chuck Smith, that created Calvary Chapel and Maranoff Productions, received from the Illuminati. And he knew it was Illuminati money before you go out of here and say that he didn't. The purpose of it was to build Maranatha Industries and Productions, which started Jesus Rock. Back when the Christian church was preaching against rock music, not knowing why, but preaching against it, just the same, and throwing it out the churches, that scared the Illuminati and the occult world to death. At that time, they almost thought their end had come. Because if that really happened within the Christian church, the Christian church would have the biggest mass revival of souls in the United States that this world has ever seen. That's the purpose for rock music, to make sure that that never takes place. Now, okay, let me finish all this, because it's long, before any hands come rushing up. <laughs> when that took place, they got scared. So they got smart, they thought, and they built Jesus Rock. And you can take some of the top Jesus Rock songs, and you can play the same rock songs over here, and it's the very same tune with new words stuck in. Now, I want to give you a, a key that witches know about Okay? The sign of the devil's music, or they say of Lucifer's music, is not the words. It's the music. The powers in the music. The sign of Christian music is not the music. It's the words. That's why one song written by a group will catch on and will bless Christians' hearts and others won't. Have you ever wondered why the Gaithers are the number one group in the United States? It's not because they sang great. Right? Because the songs they write and the par in those songs. Now, I know from being in the occult world the par in music. And I'm saying all this because I was the leader of Zodiac. I was going to get on this, and I'm, I'm still taking care of yours at the same time. By somebody asked me about rock music, but I'll do it this way. The thing about rock music was I was the leader of Zodiac Productions, which is the conglomerate that owns almost all of the rock booking agencies and production of concerts in the United States. Almost 95% of the groups that you hear in concert belong to contract to Zodiac Productions. Most of the friends that I have that are still in the world are friends that I met in the rock industry of people whose albums you buy today, okay? The Illuminati doesn't produce rock music to entertain you. They don't produce rock music to make money. They don't need that money. They own everything anyway. They do it to put demonic influence in your life. The w music is a spell, and every witch knows it. That's why when somebody's saved out of the occult, and they say, I said, say, pastor, what do I do? The pastor will go, well, burn everything that has to do with the occult. That's all the pastor says. 
and they'll bring in their rock records. Nobody has to tell them to do it. They were in witchcraft. They know what rock music is. Now, kids, I'm going to get you with this. Parents, don't pray that your kids throw out the rock music. It doesn't belong to them. It belongs to you. Amen. You are the head of the house, and although you think it belongs to them, according to God's word, everything in that house is yours. And you are the one that will face Jesus and say why you had it. The problem with Christians, particularly in a Baptist church, is that they don't realize that there's two judgments coming. One for the lost and one for the saved. And you will have to give account at the judgment seat of Christ for the things you didn't do and did do. You get it coming and going. So, if you think that you're keeping your kids from being rebellious by having the rock music in the home, have I got a surprise for you. They wouldn't be rebellious if you'd burn the stuff. Amen. So go home tonight and get rid of it. As I told the congregation last night, you can go home and count how many demons are in your home, or at least the minimum number, by how many rock albums and 45s your kids have. Now, we started out in charismatic somehow. The Probably the strongest person in the charismatic movement is the man who led the charismatic conference in Kansas City. Now, charismatics, I'm not picking on you as individuals. I'm picking on your leaders in the movement itself. Just like I'm not picking on Masons, I'm picking on the leaders of the Masons. Now, it's funny, I can come in here and I can tear down Billy Graham and nobody will lynch me. They may, somebody may think I'm crazy, but they, they'll let me alone. But if I get in the charismatic church and I touch one of their people up here, they're ready to crucify me on a moment's notice. Now, I'm going to tell you this. The man who led that conference was a Catholic cardinal. But when they elected Pope Paul, lost by two votes. Now, I don't know if you know this, but Pope Paul's in critical condition. They're already talking about a new pope. And they're proclaiming him by a landslide the leader of the Catholic Charismatic Movement. And, by the way, the leader of most of the Charismatic Movement. He said five years ago at the Notre Dame Conference, it's a matter of public record, but they'd like to keep it from you, that give him ten years and he'll have all of the churches as one because of the Charismatic Movement. That's why the uniting of the liberal and the destruction of the fundamental. You'll never get the fundamental churches to unite as one. They can't stop arguing long enough to do it. <laughs> Which I praise the Lord for. Keeps us on our toes. But they are getting the liberals. Now most of you probably sitting here would not be in this meeting unless Jesus was your Savior. But I have talked to thousands of leaders in the charismatic movement who say it is not necessary to repent of your sins and be born again. Demos Securian, this is what Demos believes, head of the full gospel business. He does not believe that you need to repent. He does not believe in a rapture, and he does not believe in a tribulation. He believes that a one world government is coming which Christians will lead. He has said over and over, if you receive the Holy Spirit and speak in tongues, and you belong to a church that is not preaching the word of God, don't leave it. Stay there. Don't leave it. Now, I believe that the Word of God says, come out from amongst them and be ye separate. Yeah. And I also believe that the same as when a prophet prophesies wrong one time, you mark him and leave him alone. If a man preaches false doctrine, you leave him alone. Yeah. Of course, you can leave me alone if you think I'm wrong about the charismatic. That doesn't bother me a bit. My job is to tell you what's happening. And I'm going to tell you whether you like it or not. Do you help for it? You praise the Lord when I tell the Masons. Keep on praising what I'm telling you. The second most powerful man, or third most powerful man in the charismatic movement is Ralph Wilkerson. Ralph Wilkerson is the head. He is really the person who tells all the charismatic leaders. He's actually the number one, but he's supposed to be ranked third. He is the man who must appear before the Council of Thirteen to take back the orders to all the rest of the people in the charismatic movement. He is the pastor of a multi-million dollar church called Melody Land, one of the largest independent charismatic Bible schools and universities in the country. And they gave that man so much, everything that is there, the Illuminati bought and built for him, and him knowing it all the whole time. The reason that he preaches that witches can't be saved and can never be saved is he's so scared that some of us will blab on it. And you're right, I'm doing it too. <laughs> Now, I have, if you think 
that everything else I say is great, then why would I lie about this particular? I have nothing to gain. I go into charismatic churches and say the same thing. I do. You think that's rough here? You ought to be there. My job, when I got saved, I told the Lord that everything that I knew the devil was doing now was going to let the world know. And man, I'm going to let them know whether you like it or not. Now, I told you the, the thing about it. And I can go on with more churches and more churches. The point is, when we have a country that is so sold out to the devil and its way of life, and we have at the same time such supposedly mass revival of a Christian belief, something stinks somewhere. Now, you're going to have to pray about it yourselves. But I'm telling you for a fact, you better question what you're into. Into, 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 into.